if you guys are anything like me, then you know that while traveling can be super exciting, the packing part, not so much. Okay, packing can be a daunting task, it can be stressful, you gotta find your luggage, you gotta make sure all the zippers work, you gotta figure out what are you gonna wear, do you have anything to wear, is it cute enough to wear on vacation, like sometimes you just don't know, you don't know if you're gonna pick this, you're gonna pick that, should you bring a sneaker, should you bring a heel, it's a big confusion, okay, so let's talk about it, let's talk about how to pack for a fall trip. Hello, hello everybody. It is Janae Shandell and I am back today again with another awesome video. And yeah, I just hope that life has been treating you well. So welcome back. Okay, so I hope you guys know by now that your girl just can't sit still for long. Okay, so I'm about to take flight and I'm headed to LA this weekend for Halloween. Boom! And I am super duper excited. For any of you all who have watched my previous videos, you know that I have been to LA one time before. I did not get to do all the things I wanted to do because of the people that I was with, and I just really didn't get to explore as much as I wanted. So, I have like a master itinerary, and it's going to be on this weekend. But, that's not why you're here. I'm going to fill y'all in on that later on. Today, why you are here is because this is going to be another helpful video about how to pack. So, in particular, this video is going to be focusing on how to pack for a fall trip, okay? Now, because I'm going to LA, I am flying, I am not driving. Hey, Dior, be quiet. I am flying and not driving, so I do have to pack a carry-on for um, flying. So, this video is going to be geared mostly to people who are flying for their fall trips and how to pack the carry-on, what you need to bring, how to pack it. I'm, I'm going to try to cover all that if your girl can't. Okay, but the thing about fall weather that I really want to point out is that fall is kind of like that weird time of year where the temperature fluctuates so much during the day. Oh, well, let's say over the course of the day. So when you wake up, it's cool and crisp and you feel like you want to bundle up. But then by the time the middle of the day comes, it's like hot and you starting to sweat. And you got to start coming out your clothes and stuff. And then around five o'clock, though, temperature starts dropping hard like a bag of rocks, right? So by the time six to seven o'clock rolls around, it's cold again, and you need to figure out how to bundle back up. So, definitely, definitely, I'm going to be talking about how to pack when you need to pack, like, to wear layers during your trip, okay? Okay, so before I even get into the clothing portion of this and the shoes portion and whatever else, I got a couple of tips that I've learned over the course of my, like, short baby travel life that I'm trying to expand into a, a long baby travel life. Anyway, a couple of tips that I picked up are the following. So, first off, you guys know that I use these, and these are those kind of zipper. I can't talk, y'all. These are those compression bags. You can also use cubes, and that's a good tip that I've picked up for those times when I need to pack more than my suitcase can handle. These come in clutch during those times, okay? You can also use packing cubes. Um, another thing that I've learned to do is I will... In my luggage, I will pack either like a regular, what you call those things? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm blinking. A regular like trash bag that I use for the trash can. I will either, I will pack an extra bag of one of those plastic bags in my, in my, in my stuff. Or I will pack one of those laundry bags, depending on what I have available at the time. And the reason why I do this is when I get there and you know, sometimes you overpack and you have extra clothes that remain clean that you never wore. I'll use that extra bag to put my dirty clothes in that I wore for the trip into that bag and then pack it in with the rest of the stuff. So that way when I get home, my dirty clothes that I wore is already separated. I can just throw them into my hamper, go ahead and wash them. And then my clean stuff that I did not wear can be put up. And, you know, the clean stuff and the dirty stuff don't have to, like, mix. Not saying that I'm smelling y'all, but, you know, you be out and you might go on hikes. You might be sweating, you know, and I don't want to mix my sweaty clothes with the clothes that I never got to wear and... I don't need to wash everything when I come back. I'm just going to wash the stuff that I wore, okay? I'm, I'm a cheapskate like that. Okay, another helpful packing tip that you probably already know is to roll your clothes. It takes up so much less space to just roll your clothes and pack them in like that. You can get more stuff in. Very, very helpful. Okay, another helpful strategy that I have started to employ 
is to only pack really what I need. The strategy that I have started to employ is to one, pack what I need, and to two, keep it to no more than the minimum, uh, maximum of two outfits per day. So what I normally do is I have one daytime outfit that I'll put on that's kind of more comfy, that I use for exploring and sightseeing, that's more like breathable and just casual, right? And then I have a second outfit for the day that's kind of like more sexy, more dressed up that I use for when we're like going to dinner for the night or we're going to hit a bar or a club. To be a notorious overpacker, I would pack way too many options and lugging that stuff around and then I didn't even wear it. It was just like a waste of my time and space and energy, okay? So don't do it. Now, in order to get to where you only like bring what you need, my other tip that's connected to that is try what you are going to wear before you pack it. Like for me, I used to just look at things and be like, oh, I might want to wear this and I throw it in the luggage. And then when I get there, I put it on. I don't like how I look. So to be able to just pack two outfits per day and only take what I need, I have started before my trip. I take the day or two before to actually like put on a fashion show for myself. That's what I call it, putting on my own fashion show. I go through my closet. I see what I like. I match stuff up. I look in the mirror and I see how it looks, how it doesn't make me feel. Can I walk in this? Can I go to dinner in this? Can I go hiking in this? And I go ahead and I test everything out before I even pack it. So that keeps me from like bringing ish that I don't need. It's just to go ahead and try it on before you pack it and before you leave. I think the number one thing is you want to make sure that you feel confident and sexy and happy and like handsome fuck you look good and your stuff while you're out on vacation because nobody wants to be wearing something that they don't feel good in, especially not on vacation and then you know you want your vacation pics to be on point so you kind of got to think about this stuff before you before you start packing before you leave okay so when it comes to clothes you have a lot of options for fall like i said you're going to be doing a lot of layering, um, and so the options are a little bit endless. You don't necessarily want to pack too many, like, thin clothes, like it's summertime, but some things can be very helpful. So, um, like, underneath sweaters, like what I have on now, you could bring tank tops. So, I always say you can bring, like, I bring, like, one to two tank tops to go underneath, so that way if I'm out and I have on something heavier in the middle of the day, I can take my sweater off and tie it around my waist, and then I can have on a tank top or just, like, a plain a plain black tee so like i'll pack something like this like just a regular plain black tee that i might wear underneath my sweater so that way if it gets hot during the middle of the day i can take it off and still be comfy and be able to keep it moving and keep rolling you know what i mean so think about packing uh some tank tops or and some plain tees that can go underneath your clothes for during the daytime when it gets hot also because it's fall consider packing maybe at least one like cardigan type of um, sweater so that way again this is another way you can layer and then take it off in the middle of the day so consider packing like a lightweight sweater or cardigan and because it's lightweight it'll be easy for you to roll and pack into your um, luggage without taking up too much space also because it's fall make sure you show your fall colors some love like you know your browns your golden colors your army greens like show your fall colors some love i know there's a lot of like trends right now for this season where like bright colors are actually in for this fall so if you have some bright colors that you've been wanting to wear um you bought a red sweater or a bright pink sweater and you feel like you are ready to wear it pack it for your vacation girl a vacation is a perfect time to wear something that you wouldn't normally wear on a daily basis. You could wear it on vacation and, you know, show out. You know what I'm saying? But I think for shirts or tops, a good ratio is to make sure you have at least like one one to two long sleeve shirts, uh, one to two short sleeve shirts so that you can lay it underneath, at least one to two tank tops, and then maybe like one sweater, like a sweatshirt like what I have here, and like a cardigan type of shirt. And I think between those tops, that'll be more than enough to carry you through a trip, whether it's three days or it's a week. You can still mix and match it and interchange them. The fun thing about fall is that you can wear skirts, you can wear pant, um, pants, yeah, can't even get it out, and you can wear shorts, depending on how you wear them. For example, you could go with a long skirt that's something like this and match something with it, and that would be cute for the fall kind of can't see or you can pack a shorter skirt 
and wear like a pair of combat boots with it you could throw on a pair of stockings depending on how cold it is if you have on a shorter skirt you can throw on some leggings depending on if they're the type of leggings that can go underneath i personally probably wouldn't pack shorts but it really depends on the weather like during the daytime if it gets warm enough to where you can get away with wearing shorts like sometimes i see a lot of people will wear like a pair of shorts and like a sweater like this and a pair of sneakers and that's pretty comfy so it depends on what your style and on how you plan to wear it where you could do shorts a uh, skirt and even a dress so dresses are a great thing to wear during fall you can put cardigans on top of the dress or you can throw a sweater like this over top of the dress or you can throw like a leather jacket on top of the dress and roll out like that so dresses are also a really great um item to pack for a fall trip another tip if you another tip about bottoms in particular is if you plan to pack jeans uh you can try to match more than one top with those jeans so that's a great thing about jeans as well during the fall is that they're versatile 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 whether however you want to say it okay so another area is undergarments so for my undergarments i normally employ the same strategy as my clothing where i make sure i have like two to three like undergarments per day so that way if i'm sweating and i need to go back to the room and freshen up i have extra so i would say always pack at least two to three undergarments per day for your trip um that way you just have more than enough and then um packing extra for when you leave so whatever your comfy undies are that you like to get on the plane with make sure you pack those okay and then for us ladies you know sometimes you need to pack a little bit extra like you know shapewear and stuff so just make sure you're thinking about what kind of undergarments you need for your trip that go well with your outfits try not to go too crazy with socks and all the other kind of stuff because those are things that can take up a lot of space in your luggage a trick would be to stuff the socks inside your shoes if it becomes to be too much or you're running out of space you can always roll your socks up or your tights up and or your stockings depending on what your preference is and you can stick them inside of your boots or your sneakers inside of your luggage Now, my next tips that I want to move on is regarding footwear. So for me, I always make sure I pack at least one comfy shoe or sneaker. So whether it's a pair of Vans, and I know they might not sound comfy, Vans or Converse's, I normally take insoles with me anyway, because when you're on vacation, you are probably going to be doing a lot of sightseeing. So it's just wise to pack it like a pair of insoles or slip or something to inserts inside your shoes so it can give you kind of like extra cushion so you don't like get worn out after the first like hour of going sightseeing. But like I said, pack a comfy shoe, at least one, if you want to pack more. It really just depends on what type of person you are. Some people are only sneaker people. Some people are only a heels type of person. It really depends on what your preference is, but you still should have at least one comfy sneaker. Okay, so the other type of shoe that I like to take is uh, one dressy shoe, at least one dressy shoe. So that can be like, uh, because it's fall and you're going on a fall trip, you could take like maybe one pair of boots that go with everything that you're bringing. So if I'm going on a three-day trip, I'll just make sure that all my dressy outfits may match with this or match with this. It just depends. So I would say limit your dressy shoes to like one to two shoes. And if you're not like a really, really dressy person, you could go with like one combat boot and like some other type of boot. It really just depends on what your preference is. But at least like like one type of going out or going to the bar type of shoe where you can kind of dress it up a little bit okay not a heel type of person or a booty type of person you can also do like a nice little flat that you can take with you that'll go with different outfits just be careful because with flats you know after a while if you go to a bar your foot might start hurting so the same tip applies with like having inserts and insoles for your flats as well okay or like an oxford type of shoe which i have a couple of them but same tip applies So my next tip is about outerwear. So because it's fall, you definitely know you need to take at least one jacket. And honestly, like my mama always taught me, like no matter where I'm going, when I'm going, you always supposed to at least pack at least one jacket with you, okay? Pack at least one jacket with you because you just never know. It might rain, like... You just never know. Plus, sometimes the plane is cold and you need to, you know, use that jacket to bundle up. But you can also use it as a pillow. So, just always make sure that you pack at least one jacket. Even if you don't really plan on wearing it, it's always good to just at least have it. If you don't want to pack it in your luggage, you could always wear it on your body on the plane. Because it's fall, you know, it's not really like freezing, freezing yet. But... A good option is to think about a one lightweight jacket, which can be like a leather jacket, 
or it can be a denim jacket. I would suggest one of the two. So having a denim jacket or a leather jacket is a lightweight jacket option. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm choking on my own saliva. Jesus. And then, depending on what the nighttime temperatures are going to be like, you can have something a little bit a little bit heavier. So, like, I have this little dressy blazer from H&M, but it's a thicker material. So, that way, if I wear it at night, it almost feels like I have on a coat, but it's not, but it doesn't look like a coat. So, having something like this is a good option for, like, at, in the later evening times. So, like, for example, when I go to Cali, the nighttime temperature is going to be about 50 degrees. So, that can be a little bit chilly to some, depending on what you're your body temperature you're used to, like if you're used to being in a climate like that, or if you're not, it can be a shock to you. Um, another option is like some of those shackets that are a little bit heavier. So I know they have two types of shackets. Some of them are thinner, which can be another lightweight option with the denim jacket and the leather jacket. Um, but if it's a heavier shacket, like the one I have here from H&M, that can be a good option. Or you can just go with like a trench coat type of jacket. It just really depends on how heavy it is and how cool it's going to be. But I would say definitely make sure you have a lightweight jacket and a heavier jacket for the evenings. Um, yeah, that's what you should have. So one other area. So okay, so one other area that I want to talk about when you go on uh, trips for fall uh, in particular is like skincare items so we all know that fall is like just, just cold weather in general really dries out your skin a little bit more than the summertime you know in the summertime we did a lot of sweating and a lot of our skincare was like trying to control oils and sweating versus in the fall and the winter your skin really gets dry so really take some time to think about what skincare items you would like to take with you i don't know why i have like a random stray light bulbs sorry i changed my light bulbs to like these like white lights Ugh, my mirror is dirty too y'all just don't look girl i gotta do better <laughs> anyway just think about what kind of skincare items you like to take with you it really depends on how simple or complicated you want your routine to be when you're away i tend to pare down my routine um, my skincare routine when i'm away so i will most likely take like a smaller version of my face wash um, a little bit of a little tiny like bottle of toner and then I normally take um, these pads here so like if you have any problem with acne then you know like you have these and the stridex pads but what I'll do is I'll take a few of them let me open it I'll take a few of them out and put them in a Ziploc bag because the TSA doesn't consider this to be liquid. So you could have these wet pads inside of a, um, a Ziploc bag and be able to like at least have the acne part of your um, skincare routine with you while you're away on your trip. The other part to that is that, like I said, things like that, like those pads, are not considered, not considered liquids. So I always, instead of having like my liquid um, makeup remover I'll take these makeup wipes because like I said they don't consider this to be liquid for TSA so you can just pack this into your carry-on you can pack it into your personal um, item and it doesn't count against you like you don't have to put it in that quart size bag so that's very important I always like I said a minimum take my toner my face wash and my um, acne pads sometimes if I have the space I may may take like one of these serums or some type of face oil but it really just depends on how much space I have makeup is a mess right now but the other area to think about for a fall trip is like makeup so because like I said the air is a little bit drier you probably can can stand to take a liquid like a liquid with you but you could have it in a smaller version so like for me I always just prioritize to just take a little concealer with me and I really don't worry about foundation too much so I'll take like this pro concealer uh, this LA girl pro concealer or sometimes I'll take like my um Tarte concealer with me because they're small it doesn't take up much space inside of my like liquid bag and normally that's all I really need because I'm doing a lot of moving around but sometimes at nighttime I want to get a little bit a little bit more extra sexy so I have this um oh where is it I found it I have this like cream foundation uh, it's like a cream stick from uh makeup revolution and this is very helpful too because this is not considered to be a liquid, so it doesn't have to go inside your liquid bag. Just prioritize what's important to you for your makeup routine. Like I said, for me, concealer, uh, my eyebrows are important to me, my, eyela my <laughs> eyelashes are important to me. And normally, I just take with me just like 
one makeup palette so i have like this morphe palette that i normally take with me but one alternative that i have found that's really good lately has been these right here and it is like these uh color strike color strike shadow pens by um maybelline new york and basically it's eyeshadow but it's on a wand so that is really helpful I use it when I'm, like, trying to put makeup uh, eyeshadow on and I don't have a lot of time to, like, do anything fancy. This is really good and clutch and, like, and quick <laughs> to, like, just do a swipe across my eye, you know, bam, 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 and then get the rolling. Okay, so my last thing that I want to talk about before I get out of here, you guys, because I really have to pack, is accessories. Accessories, accessories. So, to me, these are considered accessories. Belts will fall into this category. Pocketbooks will fall into this category. So, I know when you're traveling, it's really hard to think about accessories because they do take up space in your luggage. But I'm just so in love with, like, a cute hat, like this cute bucket hat that I got from Forever 21. Or a cute, like, baseball cap for if I'm going hiking or sightseeing. I just want to be more comfy. So, I would say, like, if you're a hat, if you're into hats, pack yourself, like, maybe one one cute hat that you want to bring with you, and always pack at least one cute purse. So, I know space is, like, limited in a suitcase, and space is, like, valuable real estate, and you know what I'm saying, whatever, however they say it, but pack at least one cute bag for those evenings where you're, like, going out to dinner, and you're going out to a bar, and you want to look cute, and you want to have a nice little clutch with you, or a nice little crossbody bag, making sure you have something that can fit in your luggage, so I always opt to buy smaller bags, so a lot of my bags are, like, smaller size, which works a lot better for me, because I can pack them in my luggage and take them with me, versus some of my oversized bags, it's just really hard to carry them on a trip, yeah, but I definitely think that it's awesome to be able to take a little purse or something and making sure that you hold on to that purse when you out, okay, because you don't want nobody to try to steal it. I always pack me a little fanny pack and then also I have like the little money belt to keep my money safe when I'm on my trip. So definitely remember to pack something like that. If you're going somewhere overseas, consider the safety of like your money, your ID, your passport when you're out. You definitely want to protect yourself against pickpocketers. Um, I always tend to have the habit to like stick my money here in my bra because if somebody gonna rob me They gonna have to touch my boobs and I'm screaming rape at that part at that point Okay, so I, I put my money here or sometimes I use like the money belts or the little uh, the, the things that go on your bra on the inside I have a couple of different ways that I like hide my money So definitely consider the safety of your documents documents and your money while you're on trips Don't bring too many electronics with you. Just really try to stick to your phone um, if you have a camera, make sure you have a way to conceal your camera or hide it. Uh, you don't want to, like, leave your room, you know, not not accusing hotel staff or anything, but you don't want to, like, leave too many expensive items in your room either while you're out and exploring because you may come back and find your itch gone. So just think about some of these things before you pack them. Do you really need them? Are they essential? I'm not going to talk you guys' ear off. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope that these tips were helpful for you. Don't forget before you go, if you enjoyed this video, to click the like button. And also hit that subscribe button in here. So again, that is all the time I have for today. And I will see you guys on the next video. Enjoy your trips. Enjoy your vacations. And make the most out of fall, okay?